And if we don't walk in a boldness to be able to speak those things, to be not as though they were, we'll never get to the next level. Some of us have been called to do things. God, God has spoken some things in your spirit, has told you some things, has said some things to you, has given you some words for certain people, and you're scared to speak them words to them people because you don't know what they're going to say, how they're going to act, if they're going to trip, if they're going to look at you differently. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Let me, right. God yeah. has spoken something, has put something in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. God has put a song in your heart, has put a word on, on, on your spirit, mm -hmm. and you're afraid to speak it because you don't know what people are going to say or what they're going to do. And then sometimes you get confused with, Lord, are you really speaking to me? Are you really telling me to tell, tell that person that? Are you really saying for me to step out and launch out into the deep? How many times have you felt like God was telling you to do something and you, and you missed your season and missed your time because you second guess what he was saying. You didn't know. Uh, are you, are you, Lord, are you seriously talking to me? Is that, come on, somebody, any, anybody have been there? You, you yeah. like, I, I know I heard the Lord. I, I feel like I heard the Lord. Yes, yes. But, but for whatever reason, I haven't really been able to walk in that. But tonight, I just want to, I want to look a little bit at a text that's going to help us to understand how to be bold. Amen? Amen. Amen. How to be bold. Uh, Come on, come on, help me out. I need uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Uh, and we're going to read. Let's see. Let's pick it up from. Uh, well, we're going to have to take it from the first verse. Acts chapter 4. Uh, for the time being, just give me the first five verses. Acts chapter 4. Uh, Beginning with verse number one. I am reading from New Living Translation. It reads, while Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees? Sadducees. Sadducees, thank you. Um, these leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them and said, they arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. Verse 5. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers and religious, religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas? Annas the high priest was there, along with Cyphus, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded... By what power or in whose name have you done this? All right, let's stop right there. Now, <clears throat> look, look, look back, look back, law to this. Uh, Peter and John had just healed someone. They had just healed someone. They, they, they had just, they had literally just healed this man. Uh, and the people were like, "Yo, like, what, like, what's up with that? How, mm -hmm. how are you doing this?" Because they, you know, they saw it done. But they couldn't understand how they were doing. Right. And their their whole you know it just it just freaked them out. They were tripping. Mama, they didn't really understand. Okay, listen. I think best thing to do is let's go in and arrest them because they doing some, they, they they doing some kind of trickery, some hocus pocus, something ain't right. Let's go in and put them in jail, and let's try to figure out what to do with them in, in the morning, because it's too late right now right. to try to really deal with this, so let's deal with it in the morning. So they put them in jail, they wake up the next morning, they bring them before the high priest, the council, they bring them before all these religious leaders, and they're here, and they're like, okay, now, what's up? How you do that? Just like, I need to know what what y'all are doing, how did y'all manage to accomplish this? Because if something ain't right about you being able to raise somebody from the dead, something ain't right. right. Yeah. So, so, something ain't right. I need to kind of figure out what's going on. And so this is where we find ourselves when we get to, what, what's that? We're at verse, uh, eight. verse number 8. Now, what is it, what did they say in verse 8? Then Peter, being filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? 
let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. All right, stop right there. So now, now, now that's some boldness, ain't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they're standing in front of the, the, the religious leaders and, and, and they've been arrested. They got people dealing with them that can literally put them in prison for the rest of their life. Right. And they still ain't backing off mm -hmm. of who they serve and how they accomplish what they accomplish. So if I'm gonna tell you, if, if I'm gonna tell you anything, because there's a lot of points to make here, is seven is is seven things that we need to understand before we become or can become Holy Ghost bold. But the first thing you need to understand before anything else is that in order to do anything spiritually. You will have had to spend some time with God. Yeah. You cannot accomplish, accomplish anything in this life from a spiritual standpoint or even a physical standpoint if you do not spend time with God. In, in, in order to get anywhere, in order to get to your destiny, to find out who he is, what he wants from you, where he's taking you, what he's got for you, in order to stop making our same mistakes that we make repeatedly over and over and over again, we have to spend time with God so that he can give us insight as to who we are in him so that we will let go of stuff we think we are in them. Y'all right. catching me? Yes. Because we got, we, got, we, got, we got certain ideas and certain concepts about ourselves that are shaped on the basis of who we hang out with, where we've been, right. what we've done, who we're related to, who our friends are. Come on, somebody. Right. We, got, we, we got things that we're doing right now, and we do them, and by the time we get home, we're convicted by what we have done. <laughs> because we're connected to somebody and something that we know we really don't need to be connected to. And we're operating in a way that we feel like is not really who I am in God. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. It's, really, it's really not who I am in God. So when, when, when Paul, when uh, Peter speaks, he said, listen, first of all, and, and, and you got, did, you, did you notice the clap back? He said, let me, let me ask you this. Are y'all like questioning us because we did something good? Right. Are, are y'all really doing that? Right. Are y'all are, are, with all this nonsense that's going on in the world? You questioning us because we heal a sick man? Right. I, is that really what? That's 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 Peter's whole demeanor. Yeah. Are, are you really coming at me like that? Right. Did Did you really just stop me from healing a sick man? Are you really like going, y'all going in on me for that? <laughs> and basically they had to go, yeah, that's why we, that's, we want to know what's up. We want to know what the deal is. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, he said, well, let me tell you exactly how I did it so that you don't give me any credit. He said, I did it by the power and the might that's been given to me by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I mean, Jesus Christ and Nazareth, the one you put to death, right? the one that died, and came back on the third day, the stone that the builder rejected, yeah. who has now become the chief cornerstone, that's the power that I'm doing this under. And, and, and it, it makes me have to say, it, it shows me that if I'm going to, if we're going to do anything in this life, not only do we have to spend some time with Jesus, but we got to know who Jesus is. Yeah. Because yeah. it ain't just enough to spend time with a person. How many times you spent time with somebody and after two, three, four, five years, you still didn't know who he was or who she was? Yeah. You still you, you, you thought you knew somebody. You thought you come on, I'll be real talk. You thought you knew somebody and then they did something totally off kilter with what you thought they were and who you thought they were to you. This is what this is what he says. He said, "Listen, you got to you, listen. I'm, what I'm doing, I'm not doing under my own pipe. I'm not under my own might. I'm not under my own power. I am doing it by the power that's been vested in me by Jesus Christ." Notice what he said. He says this. He says he was. The text says he was filled yeah. with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And watch this. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, even though he was in front of rulers and elders of the people. 
Are y'all catching me on that? It, just because he was in front of people that were considered bigger than him, right. greater than him, granted in him with more power and more authority, he still was filled with the Holy Spirit. That means, the, that, that means the Holy Spirit is no respect to a person. Just because somebody is greater than you, so allegedly, or bigger than you, allegedly, or has more than you, allegedly, that does not mean that you cannot walk in the, the, the anointing of God. Right. That does not mean that you cannot walk yeah. in Holy Ghost boldness. Just because somebody else got the degree, got the education, got the money, got the houses, got the right. land, right. does yeah. not mean yeah. that yeah. Yeah. you can still walk in Holy Ghost boldness and you can tell somebody that's greater than you, sit down. Right. Yes. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right. He said, yes. He said, yes. He's filled with the Holy Ghost <laughs> and he opens his mouth. He said, Are we are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Right. Watch this. He takes the position of authority, which means that he snatches authority from the ruler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he becomes the one with the authority. He said, he said, listen, I know y'all, I know y'all rulers, and I know y'all elders, but do you need an education right now? Do you need me to education? <laughs> do you need me to help you right now? Do you need me to do you need me to make sure you understand what's going on here? He says, listen, he says, yes, we did this. But let me be clear and state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something? There are some things that you want from God, that you need from God, and that you can have from God. But you've got to ask it in his name. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah, yeah. You want to be healed? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, go to the doctor, deal with the doctor, do what the doctor says do, but don't ask the doctor to heal you. Right, right. Come on. Say There's yeah. some things that are not going to happen unless you call upon the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things that are just not going to happen. Yeah. You want to get rid of the wrong Negro? Call on Jesus. Don't just call the police. Yeah. <laughs> because the, the police will get rid of him tonight. Right. But he's coming back tomorrow. Right. But if you want to get rid of some stuff in your life, you got to start asking it in Jesus' name. Yeah. I, I, I claim it in Jesus' name. Yeah. I declare yeah. and decree that no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to yeah. do it in Jesus' name. Jesus. I am not asking it in my power. It's not by my might. My no. children will be healed in Jesus' name. No. I will have money in Jesus' name. Yeah. I will have a job in Jesus' name. I will be whole. I will be healed. In Jesus' name. I will be healthy. In Jesus' name. We've got to learn how to call those things to be that be not as though they were. And speak them in Jesus' name. Yes. Y'all, come yeah. on, they did. 
Sometimes I look like I, I look like where I actually been. Right. I look like who I've been connected to. But you got to learn how to walk in boldness. Yeah. And no matter what, I am still going to call upon the name of Jesus. Yeah. He yeah. says, listen, yeah. he says, let me be clear. He was healed by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. The man you crucified. Watch this. See, you got to, that's bold. That's bold. Because mm -hmm. okay? he's talking to the people that crucified Jesus. He said, yeah, he was healed. The man was healed by the man you crucified. He was healed by the man you put to death. What does that, what does that verse say? Try, what, what does uh, verse number, number 10 say? <coughs> verse, verse 10 and, yes, 10. and 11, yeah. 10 says, let me clearly state to all of you, and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you build is rejected has now become the cornerstone. Did y'all catch that? Y'all, y'all, you, you, y'all, y'all killed him. Right. Y'all killed him. Y'all said he wasn't who he said he was. Right. He died, then he came back. He was a stone that builders rejected, but now he's the chief cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's the rock that the church is founded on now. Yeah. This stone that y'all tossed away is now the rock that the church is founded on. So now, this whole text teaches us that. If we're going to be bold in Christ, if we're going to be bold in Christ, we have to have spent some time with him. You can't call upon anybody. How many times, did you, let me ask you a question. If somebody you ain't talked to Ellen in months, call you and ask you for some money, you ain't seen them. You ain't, you ain't talked to them, you ain't seen them. They've been nowhere around. You go, hey man, listen, can I borrow a hundred? What you going to say? <laughs> right. Sometimes you need to stand there. Sometimes you need to stand there. Sometimes you just stand there and look at them. Because you're wondering how they can be bold enough. I know. Huh? Yeah. How, 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 how the old folks say, how could you fix your mouth? <laughs> to even ask me something like that. I ain't seen you. I ain't heard from you. I was in the hospital, you ain't called a check on me. <laughs> I lost my job, I couldn't call and borrow nothing from you. <laughs> and now you calling me after all this time right. and you asking me to give you some money. <laughs> Come on here. Yeah. That, you can't call on Jesus if you ain't spent no time with him. Right. Right. God ain't heard from you, Lord ain't heard from you, ain't seen you, you ain't been to church. You ain't been to Bible study. You ain't uttered a prayer. You ain't read a scripture. You ain't done nothing. And then when it's time for you to get what you want, you go, Jesus, can you? Right. How do you think Jesus is going to feel about that? Mm. This suggests that, you know, the part I really liked about this, the part I really liked about this text is where it talks about, it talks about how these men, when... <clears throat> They saw, what, what, what's that, what, what verse is that? Uh, With that carriage. Read, but start at verse 12. I want to show y'all something right quick. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Stop. These people was like, yo, are you serious? Right. And the reason they thought that they looked like that was because to them, mm -hmm. Peter and John were just ignorant men. Yeah. These are just a couple of dumb men, don't know nothing. Right. Ain't got no education, don't have our education, mm -hmm. don't have our money, don't have our houses, don't have our land. But they did all of that, they spoke so eloquently and with such power right. and authority. That tells me something else. If you go move in Holy Ghost boldness, 
you got to learn how to speak with authority. Yeah, right. yeah. You can't just, you yeah. can't say, the Lord will fix it. I declare God is going to make a way. Who going to believe that? Somebody come to you, they got they got issues, they got they got physical issues, they got ailments, they got stuff going on in their household, they got kids running them up, they got they got they done lost their job and all this other kind of stuff, and you stand here and pray. <laughs> Father, bless their finances. I know you can. Right. Go in peace. Now if I walk, I walk away from that kind of prayer, I'm going, <laughs> I don't let you lay hands on me, and you ain't speaking with no kind of boldness, no kind of authority. What you, did you hear me say that I got stage four cancer, and they telling me I'm about to die, and your prayer is nice, quiet, and simple? <laughs> I need you to. I need you to move with some boldness. I, I need some bold. I need you to act like you know he can make it that way, and you know he's gonna fix it. And you want somebody in your way? Don't go. If you want him out your life, out your house, and you want him out your relationship, you don't go to them and go. Can you please? <laughs> 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 he ain't going. You got he, he ain't going nowhere. He going in the room, gonna lay down. You gotta learn how to say, hey man, look, it's you got to go. <laughs> and you got to go not now, but right now. Can <laughs> I show him how you do it? How you do it? How do you supposed to leave? Come on, come on. Can I show him right quick how they supposed to leave? Can, just real quick, can you show him? Show him how he's supposed to leave. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Emotions. 
You got to exercise emotional control over negative emotions. There are some people that rub you the wrong way. It's some people that's gonna rub you, man. It's some people that's gonna rub you the wrong way. It's some, it's some stuff that people do, and they and, and, and they ain't even got to do it directly to you. Yeah. Right. But it's some stuff that people do. They have to, there are some stuff that people have done to me indirectly by doing something to somebody I love. Mm. Y'all, yes. come on, come yes. on. But you've got to exercise emotional control yeah. over yeah. negative yeah. emotions. Yeah. Yes, they, they, how many times you just, you just have seen somebody, I just want, man, I, if, if I didn't That's fear, if, look, if I didn't fear incarceration <laughs> by human authority figures, <laughs> I'd have been like that. Yeah. Come on, how many times you said that? I'd have been took a, I'd have been took a knife to them tires. I'd have, I'd have been do a brick through that window. I'd, I'd have been I'd have been broke somebody. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I broke somebody. Yeah. If, if I didn't fear retaliation, how many times? How many times have you have you gone to bed having to repent? For what you were thinking about doing this. Yeah, yeah, yes. Because, because guess what? Guess what? Yes. You have to exercise emotional control. Well, Lots of times, do you know that when we go off and we go left, it is because that is our emotions acting without the benefit of intellect? Yeah. Right. It, it's our emotions acting without the benefit of intellect. We're not really thinking about the consequences of our actions. Trust me. Y'all look, come on, and I, I ain't got to go into it. Y'all know I know. Y'all know I know. Y'all know I know. It, it wasn't enough for me to just say, okay, give me the papers. Right. I'm good. I start thinking about 10 years, 14 years, this, that, and the other thing. And, 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 and instead of taking the papers and walking away, getting on my knees and praying, Oh, come yes. on. Come yes. on. See, see, when you've been delivered, you can have a conversation like this. Right, wow. right. See, 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 instead of just walking away, I start shaking. Come on. And before I knew it, I wasn't just shaking, I was shaking her. Come on, y'all, yeah. man. See? Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. Before I knew it, I'm shaking her. And now I am all out of sorts and out of whack. Now I'm exercising my emotions. I'm walking in my yeah. emotions. Right. I'm not using common sense. Yeah. I did not care. You hurt me. I want to hurt you. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Do I need to tell you the scripture says, so a man thinking, so also is he. How many people y'all to kill? Come on. Somebody missed that. Y'all catch it on the way home. So a man thinketh, so also is he. How many times you done knocked somebody out in your mind? <laughs> Come on, somebody. But so you got to learn how to take emotional control over negative emotions. Right. And these are now listen, these are the emotions you need to take, you need to control. First, you need to control your anxiety. Second, you need to control your fear. Third, you need to control your doubt. Fourth, you need to control your guilt. Fifth, you need to control your depression. Sixth, you need to control your discouragement. And seventh, you need to control your jealousy. That's good. All right, yes. Yeah, Got to control right. jealousy, discouragement, depression. You got to control guilt, doubt, fear, anxiety. <laughs> and, that, and on that day, on that day, on that fateful day three years ago, I was operating in all seven of them. All seven of them were controlling me. She gave me the divorce papers. First thing I felt was guilt mm -hmm. because I was wondering what I did to cause it. <laughs> then I was operating in doubt. Are you divorcing me because you don't love me? Y'all, come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. somebody yeah. Yeah. Are you Tell it, man. Because you don't love me? Then I was feared. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? I've been married for 13 years. Now I'm about to be single again. I don't want to be a hoe again. I don't want to be out there in them streets. Come, come on. on. See, come on. on. Yeah. I want to be here too. I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to be out there again. Come on. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah. so I'm operating in fear. Then, I'm, then I'm, I got all kind of anxiety going on because I'm thinking I got all this stuff going in my mind. I got to go in church without a wife 
A wife that all of us love. Come on, yeah. somebody. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. All of us love. <laughs> I'm anxious. I don't know what to do. Then, I, then I'm operating. I'm operating in depression. Y'all already know. Well, oh God, what am I gonna do? What I'm gonna do? I don't know how. To, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. Then I'm discouraged. Is anybody ever gonna love me again? Come on, come on. Yeah. And then I'm jealous because when she got me, well, I mean to tell a city anyway. <laughs> I'm still, um, but 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 still, you jealous? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So you operating in all of these things, and now your emotions have taken over. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you can't move in Holy Ghost boldness. You can't be bold in Christ yeah. when you bold in your flesh. Oh, yeah. 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 When your flesh has got control over everything that you're doing, you can't you can't be bold in Christ. Right. So you got to do that. Then you have to have a bulldog tenacity. It ain't gonna take you got five minutes. I'll get them all out. You have to have a bulldog tenacity. You know what a bulldog tenacity is? You ever seen how pit bulls operate? Yeah. They're very territorial. And they're going after what they want. They're going to get what they want. And they don't care what, they don't care how big it is. Dogs will bark no matter if they're this big and you this yeah. big. Or if you're the same size as them. They got the same bark. Yeah. They got the same bark. And I, and I know Pastor watches a whole lot of animal channels, so do I. You know, they put dogs out there with lions. And dogs just bark. They just bark. They don't realize that this is. It, I don't care what they call you in the jungle. I don't, I don't care that you're the king of the jungle. Right. <laughs> you, know why, you know why I don't care? You know why I don't care, Twani? Because I'm a dog. Right. So I don't yeah. care. And you got to learn how to operate with that same kind of tenacity. I don't care what you say, Satan. I'm a child of God. Yeah. And I can't get whatever I want. And if you bark at me, I'm barking back. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You got to bark for what you want sometimes. Sometimes you got to holler until you get what you need. Yeah. You be tenacious in your approach. Whatever yeah. you want from God. No, I am not going to be a single mother the rest of my life. No, I am not going to live in an apartment for the rest yeah. of my life. No, I'm not going to walk for the rest of my life. No, I'm not going to wait on somebody the rest of my life. I'm going to be the lender and not the borrower. Yeah. Control what I do yes, and control right. how I act. Yes. 